Hello and welcome to episode 88 and I've had a request to look at a specific AKG microphone and the question was we talk about things like AKG C414s but why does nobody ever talk about the AKG C3000? That's a decent cardioid only microphone, it's been about for quite a long time and it very rarely ever gets a mention. Well that's what they look like. Um, a C3000 AKG. Now the weird thing is I've got one of these and quite frankly I don't use it very much maybe you know once or twice a year and I've had this one a fair while and um, when the question was asked why do I want to use a 414 versus a C3000 when the 414 spends most of its time sitting firmly on the cardioid pattern why don't I use a C3000? The answer is a bit ridiculous. And it's all down to how these things fit in the clips. Now, I'm hopelessly untidy, I lose things, I'm dreadful. Um, and the C414 mount, I've managed to sort of keep, and I've got, I've got a couple because I've got a couple of C414s. And this thing fits in those mounts really snugly. I'll show you what they look like. So the 414 mounts, these ones uh, have been what's supplied with this mic for quite a while now and essentially they're all made out of plastic. Uh, if you buy a Neumann you get a metal one, if you buy an AKG C414 you get a plastic one. Now that's not ever caused me any grief and the thing is quite well designed. Now realistically it's elastic and it's suspended like that so it's it's a decent shock mount and it's got a compression fixing on the bottom if you look in that little hole there inside there are four little rubber fingers and when you turn the knob like that the four fingers secure the microphone and you can put them in the normal them in the normal way I would use them would be sort of that way around so that when you're looking at the front of the mic the mic is recessed into the mount and you can get to the switches which are on the back um, but it's quite secure but it doesn't really matter if you were to put it in the other way around I mean you could actually drop it in the top um, I actually often use these on other mics um, the diameter of the bottom of the 414 being a, a, an ordinary tube uh, it's quite forgiving on the actual size but you could pop the mic in that way. Turn the knob and it's very secure. You could easily hang it upside down, it won't fall out. Um, and I like these mounts and they work really well with these microphones. Um, not quite so with the C3000. The C3000 is vaguely similar to a 414 and, and uh, you know it's fairly chunky heavyweight microphone and looks pretty similar but it's not. This bit at the bottom has got a taper and I lost the mount for this one uh, years ago. Uh, I think I probably left it somewhere or whatever or maybe I even got it mixed up with something else and I don't even remember how it even fastened. It's just one of those things that I, I, I lost the mount and it doesn't fit very well into there. So you can drop it in, but it will move because the taper only gets gripped at the top. So while I can tighten it up, and it's it's not too bad, I've, I've had a few fall out. And as a, as a consequence, I think I probably put this mic back in the mic box and um, didn't really give it a decent crack, I think because it's quite a decent performer uh, and it's quite an attractive looking microphone. It's very well built, all the usual things. Um, sounds nice. I just wasn't really happy with the way it fitted in there. It does work and certainly, you know, for dropping it in, uh, it's not going to be a problem. I don't think I'd be very happy reversing it and dangling it, um, but it's okay. I've got one of these quite strange looking clamps these made by Rycote. Um, they've got uh, their sort of lyre style 
isolation. So it's not rubber, it's not elastic, uh, it's like a plastic thing. And it that sort of uh, isolation works quite well. It does seem a bit still noticeable when you sort of do that on a mic, that seems to get through. But the deep thumps and the bumps and the occasional perhaps kick of a stand is not too bad. Now, the thing with these is that we have adjustable screws. So I can put the microphone in there and then I can And they're quite good. And the microphone sitting in here is pretty secure. I think it'd be probably quite nice for sort of radio use, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's a different design. I That's what I got to try and put on here. But frankly, it's just too big and unwieldy. Um, and the mic ended up not being used, you know, despite having at least the ability to clamp it decently with this rather unusual type of mount but you know there we go that's what it is I figured we'll put the C3000 up against the 414 both set to cardioid ignore all the other patterns that 414's got and see if you hear my voice better worse hardly any different on the 3000 versus the 414 because there's a substantial difference in the price and if you don't need uh, the Omnis and the bi-directional figure eight patterns, well, the C3000 could be a decent mic to go for. So uh, we'll put them up and you can have a listen. OK, the mics are up. We've got our SM7B for comparison purposes, the Sure Dynamic. And then we've got the 414 and then we've got the C3000, both AKG microphones. Um, we'll start by switching from the sure that we're listening to now to the 414 so we're on the 414 now and it's a microphone with lots of different polar patterns so we've got the two capsules back to back that gives us omnidirectional gives us figure of eight gives us cardioid and we get flavors of cardioid so we can have an ordinary cardioid we can have a wider cardioid and we can have a narrower cardioid and things in between so We've got a whole spectrum, but it's sitting on cardioid at the moment. So this is the 414 in its cardioid position, which, being frank, is where it spends most of its life. Uh, with 414s on the back, you've got a button, so you can actually take the bottom end off. You can put in some pads if you're going to use it on very loud sources. And that's its sort of claim to fame. It can do most things pretty well, and that's why I use it so often. Let's switch to the C3000. Now the 3000 is cardioid only, but pretty much it's the sort of same sort of design philosophy. So again, we can get rid of the base at the bottom if we want. There's actually a switch to sort of take the bottom end right off. And it's got a single pad as well. We've got a variable pad actually on the 414. We can have two different amounts of attenuation. On the C3000, it's just a straightforward pad. Um, and it works pretty okay okay we'll switch about between the two while I chat um the thing I have noticed when I picked it up again this morning is that the C3000 is a very chunky microphone it's got an incredibly solid feel to it the 414 which is you know not badly made and it's the same sort of sort of case style it's tough it's made really well but there is just this thing about an expensive microphone and perhaps the chance of breaking it. I mean, would you put it near something like drumsticks? You know, would you, I mean, you could put these on tom-toms. I'm sure they'd do a great job. But the idea of a drummer giving it a clout with a drumstick is just recipe disaster. I mean, I, I wouldn't do it and, and I'm not particularly careful. So a 414 is probably going to be great, and I'll use it on the choirs and the orchestras and the singers and things like that. It's it's fine. It's a great mic for that sort of thing. The C3000 does, does give me the impression that it's a really solid mic. So I don't know. Um, maybe I did it a severe injustice by just because I lost the original clamp, sticking it away in a 
in a box and not using it. And I think I'm going to. So what do we think? Well, I have to say, I quite like the sound of this C3000. Um, and I can see me using it far more than I have done. And I feel a bit guilty that it's been sort of stuck away for so long and I've sort of dismissed it. Uh, I think it would be an excellent mic for someone to buy because the price is far more modest than buying a 414. And if you don't need all those patterns, well, you spend a lot of money on bits you're not ever going to use. So I think the 414 probably comes second. Uh, that's a bit... I didn't expect to say that. Well, there we go. C3000 versus the C414. You heard them both. Um, what do you think? It's quite tricky, isn't it? Anyway, see you on the next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye.